Chapter 22 And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. For adventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, but adventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more, and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam, and said to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, what have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. For I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men. But only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. 
And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. The Holy Bible, the King James Version Read by Alexander Scorby The First Epistle General of John, Chapter 1 That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Good morning, everyone. The song says, What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. It is such a wonderful privilege to awake each day knowing that the God we are leaning on will take us through this day so long as we remain in contact with Him. Today, once again, we are focusing on a passage, one of our passages for today in a new book of the Bible. We're looking at 1 John chapter 1. We are looking at 1 John chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Again, 1 John chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, please be with us now as we listen to your word. For Christ's sake, amen. Today's message is entitled, True Fellowship, True Fellowship. Now, in the Bible, the word fellowship is used to speak of a mutual sharing in some blessing or experience. In the Bible, the word fellowship is used to speak of a mutual sharing in some blessing or experience. In the New Testament, the term is used to express the concept of joint participation in such experiences as sharing together in the blessings of the gospel. According to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 5, in that verse it is used as partnership. partnership. The word is particularly found in passages 
that refer to the close relationship that Christians experience firstly with God. With God. First John chapter 1 and verse 3 states, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father. Is with the Father. So firstly, the term fellowship speaks of our relationship with God the Father. Secondly, the word fellowship is used in the Bible to speak of our relationship with Jesus. With Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 says, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thirdly, the word fellowship is used with reference to our relationship or our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14, reading from the Revised Standard Version, you will find the word fellowship where communion is. And so, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So, that is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible uses the word fellowship with reference to our relationship with one another. Fellow believers, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 7, verse 7 particularly says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We have fellowship one with another. So in the Bible, the word fellowship is used of the relationship, the close relationship, between us and God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and with fellow believers. Friend of mine, in our passage for today, the Apostle John looks firstly at fellowship with God. In our passages, he looks both at fellowship with God and fellowship with human beings. So firstly, he deals with fellowship with God. He says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 6, If we say, that we have fellowship with him, with God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. In other words, friend of mine, the claim to fellowship with God must be demonstrated by its practical results. We say that again, the claim to fellowship with God must be demonstrated by its practical results. There will be a two-sided life, a life of thought and action, a life of prayer and work. You see, to practice the presence of God is to be conscious at all times of his nearness through his Holy Spirit. Every thought, every word, every act reflects consciousness of his loving presence and his all-seeing eye. We have come to love him. We know that he has always loved us and we are grateful for his care. According to Psalm 139 verse 1 to 12, John chapter 31, rather Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3. And so as naturally as a child confidently slips his hand into that of his father at the approach of danger and keeps his hand there even when the danger is past, so the child of God walks with his heavenly father. In that same manner, the child of God walks with his heavenly father walks with her heavenly father and so such is true fellowship with god oh yes such is true fellowship with god and friend of mine loving obedience to god's commands demonstrates our fellowship with him loving obedience to his commands demonstrates our fellowship with jesus john highlights here in the text the hypocrisy of those who profess to follow the way of light but voluntarily walk in darkness and since God is light, according to verse 5, all who fellowship with him must also walk in light. And hence, therefore, any who claim fellowship with the Father and yet walk in the darkness of sin must be lying. 
Their claims to fellowship with God, their claim to communion with God prove at least a measure of acquaintance with light. But the darkness that surrounds them reveals that they are either kept from the light by ignorance or have deliberately shut themselves away from the light. And so John speaks about fellowship with God. And he says, walking in the light of truth, walking in the light of righteousness demonstrates our fellowship with God. John now talks about fellowship with human beings. He says in verse 7 of 1 John, he says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. O friend of mine, if we walk in the light, we walk with God, from whom the light shines, and have fellowship not only with God, but also with all others who are following the Lord. In other words, serving the same God, believing the same truths, following the same instructions on the pathway of life, we cannot fail to walk in unity. And hear the word, the slightest sign, the slightest sign of ill will between us and our brethren should make us review our own conduct to be sure that we are not veering away from the lighted path of life. Because the text says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship. But thank God, when we discover perhaps that we are veering away from the path of truth, and that veering is disturbing our relationships with our fellow human beings, the Bible says we can run to Jesus for forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh yes, the word cleansing means to make clean. It is used with reference to cleansing the leper and in the Bible for cleansing from sin and from the guilt of sin. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1, Ephesians 5 26 and Hebrews 9 and verse 14. Friend of mine, but specifically now, specifically now, the cleansing to which the Apostle John here refers is not that which accords with the first repentance and confession at the beginning of the Christian walk. And which precedes fellowship. Rather, the cleansing here spoken of is that which continues throughout the earthly life and is part of the process of what we call sanctification, making us more and more like Jesus. You see, friend of mine, none but Christ has ever lived a sinless life. We need to be cleansed from our sins continually. And John is so humble that he places himself among those who need this cleansing, this daily cleansing, even though he was such an apostle. He says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us, us himself included, from all sin. And by the way, those who walk, those who walk nearest to God, will, in the glory of his light, be most conscious of their own sinfulness. We say that again. Those who walk nearest to God will, in the glory of his light, be most conscious of their own sinfulness. And so, friend of mine, I challenge us today, let us audit our relationships to see if there is anything spiritual or sinful that is affecting our relationships or relationships at work with our workmates, or relationships at school if we are students, or relationship at church among the brethren, or relationship at home among family members, and our relationship in our marriage. Because the text is clear. It says if we walk in the light of truth and righteousness, as God is in the light, we have fellowship, good relationship with one another. So if the relationship is not as good as it should be perhaps we need to get closer to jesus by prayer bible study bible reading fellowship at church and sharing our faith may god help us to have true fellowship with him and with one another today let us pray heavenly father thank you so much for your word today thank you lord that you want to have fellowship with us it's such an humbling experience to know 
that God values us so much that he wants to have fellowship with us. Help us, dear Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit to live so close to you that we will also have fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and in the world. Take us through this day with your presence, with your power, and with your peace is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.